So I used to think that apple cider vinegar was one of those overhyped internet foods. You know, like something that's going to cure your heart attack, your cancer, fix your car, and your ailing marriage. So when we planned to do the original apple cider vinegar video, we were doing the research and guess what I'm eating now? Apple cider vinegar. The evidence was really good. So in this video, we're gonna talk about three major benefits that you get with apple cider vinegar, two tablespoons a day. We're also gonna talk about brands, at least a couple of brands. And you know, the thing was, we got a ton of debate about brands. And we'll let tell you what we found and let you make your own choice about that. The other thing is, I don't know if you noticed some of this cloudiness in here. The mother. Everybody mentions the mother, but nobody really talks that much about what is the mother? Where did it come from and what does it do? We're going to talk about that too. So before we get started, remember this. I got to say it because I just got to have to. You can't out supplement a bad lifestyle. And ACV is not going to save your marriage and get you out of debt and make you happy forever. But it's a great option for a healthy diet. If you're new to the channel, you might not know that I have type 2 diabetes. Technically, anyway. I have a very minimal amount. I'm 67 at this point. It's not unusual for a 67-year-old male. What's unusual is that I diagnosed it so early. And that's because I do what I do for a living. Most people don't have that kind of background. And unfortunately, most doctors don't know how to diagnose it that early. For most people with type 2 diabetes, there are two major points of concern on a regular basis. We call them bioindicators. They're sort of like the dashboard on your car. You need to keep an eye on them. Fasting glucose is helpful to be aware of, and especially triglycerides. Those are the fats. And here's why fats are so important. When you have metabolic disease, prediabetes, and especially diabetes, your insulin levels often go up. Whether they do or not, you start getting into trouble burning fat. Even though you may continue to eat it in your diet, you have trouble burning it. One of the things that happens is our body starts to store that excess fat in a lot of places. And even your doctor usually won't know this. One of the first places that your body starts to store that fat that it can't burn up is in your bloodstream, in the particles. We consider those cholesterol particles, and they used to talk about good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. That's outdated. Bottom line is triglycerides in your blood are an important indicator. That's what you need to remember. You don't need to try to remember all the stuff about cholesterol values and that sort of thing. Let's get back to ACV. One of the first things you might notice after taking ACV daily for a few weeks is that it can decrease the fasting glucose level and especially those triglyceride levels. That's been shown by these three meta-analyses right here. A lot of people that Think about ACV. Well, it slows the stomach because of the acid, and therefore that's how it works. Mm -mm. Well, that may be part of it, but there are some other big mechanisms here. It's a big step forward for people to start lowering those blood triglycerides. Those triglycerides are a major indicator of risk for heart attack and stroke. High levels of blood sugar and triglycerides are very inflammatory. They basically burn your arteries. They create plaque. Now, talking about mechanisms for ACV, let's go into that. Number one, it decreases absorption of sugars by decreasing amylase. That's an enzyme that helps absorb glucose in the intestines. So it slows down an enzyme that absorbs glucose in the intestine. That's a really good thing. Number two, it slows down the stomach, as we mentioned earlier, and many people figured out, partially because of that acetic quality. So glucose is absorbed more slowly. And your body, even if it's having problems metabolizing glucose, can slow that down and can adapt to that slower, slower amount. Number three, it also blocks enzymes that create fats that make the body produce fewer triglycerides. So the enzymes that make these fats are slowed down. It blocks them. And so the body produces fewer of those fats, those triglycerides that we talked about. Now, I told you I have diabetes, but 
there's one thing with diabetes, again, you should know. I'm lucky because I found it very, very early. By the time they get a diagnosis of diabetes, already have damage, permanent damage to their eyes or even their arteries, clearly their arteries, and many people, even the nerves. You hear about people that have neuropathy, damage to nerves associated with diabetes. So most people, when they get diagnosed with diabetes, already have a decade or two of diabetes and that damage going on to the arteries, especially gentle or delicate arteries in the back of the eyeball and that supply nerves. Those arteries often have been damaged by the time the diagnosis of diabetes is made. That didn't happen with me because I was looking so diligently early on. In fact, between one and two-thirds of people already have that kind of permanent damage to their eyes by the time their diagnosis of diabetes is made. So if you're one of these people, and most of us do this, it's called denial. I don't want to know whether I've got diabetes or not. And if I don't look, maybe it won't be happening. Don't think that way. Don't let that damage to those delicate arteries of your eyeball and your nerves, don't let that happen while you're in the denial phase. Find out early. Now, fasting glucose and A1C, that's what most doctors use. Just ask your own doctor how he or she diagnoses diabetes. Here's a problem with that. We'll discuss it a little bit later, but the issue is those tests are too little, too late. Before meeting the criteria for diabetes, your body tries to respond and solve the problem the way it does by increasing the levels of another hormone called insulin. Insulin is produced by the pancreas. It usually goes into the bloodstream as a response to increased glucose. So when you eat a bag of Doritos or a bowl of Cheerios, all that glucose triggers that response. Now, wait a minute. If you're thinking, that's not really, there's not glucose, there's not sugar on Doritos, think again. Even more so than sugar, ultra-processed grain products, any product that has grain powder in it, like flour, like Doritos, and cereals, like Cheerios. Those have even more sugar than table sugar. Don't think that you're not getting sugar just because you're eating Doritos and they're not sweet. Your body's getting more sugar with that than it would a tablespoon of sugar, of table sugar. So be aware. Over time, stimulating your insulin too much with things like these ultra-processed grains, those Doritos, those breakfast cereals, the insulin becomes more inefficient. The science geeks will say it becomes down-regulated. Your pancreas needs to push more insulin if it becomes down-regulated, if you start to become resistant to insulin. And guess what that's called? Insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is the beginning of prediabetes and diabetes. But it doesn't end there. High levels of insulin can also be inflammatory. It can directly damage your arteries, and it blocks fat burning too. I mentioned that earlier. One of the things that high levels of insulin does that most people don't understand is it blocks us from burning fat. That's why we get that big increase in triglycerides. And as our body is unable to burn those triglycerides, it starts looking for a place to store them. One of the first places it stores them is in the cholesterol particles of our blood. Now, here's a recent meta-analysis. It shows that the vinegar in ACV, apple cider vinegar, can decrease both glucose and insulin after meals. Now, that means ACV can help you tolerate and manage carbs coming from your diet. And that can be a big deal, especially as we start getting older or heavier, fatter, and start having insulin resistance or diabetes. Reducing both glucose and insulin and the risk of inflammation. We're going to bring up inflammation in a minute and talk about what that is. But glucose and insulin cause inflammation. And again, ACV can help slow that down. This is a key consequence related to all these benefits. And there's another key consequence that you have heard of, but you probably never connected to apple cider vinegar. You want to guess what it is? Blood pressure. Even before I found I had diabetes, my first step into that world of chronic disease, this was not at age 57, this was more like age 54 or 53, I noticed I had a slightly elevated blood pressure. That's what most people do as they start stepping into chronic disease. Just like me, the first thing they start finding is elevated blood pressure. 
You might be surprised to know that elevated insulin and glucose are closely related to high blood pressure. There's a thing called AGE, advanced glycation end products. Those advanced glycation end products can start messing with the pressure receptors in our kidneys, causing it to increase. And you might say, why did you go down that bunny hole, the AGE, advanced glycation end products? Because the number one AGE out there is something that you have heard of. It's that test that your doctor relies on, hemoglobin A1c. And here's the thing that you need to remember about it. It's what we call glycated hemoglobin, or hemoglobin where the sugar has bound to that protein in the hemoglobin. That can mess with your pressure receptors in your kidneys. And by the way, so does insulin. It can also mess with your kidneys and say, hmm, we need to increase the volume here, the pressure. So, For the millions out there dealing with blood pressure, I do have good news. Another recent meta-analysis shows that consumption of vinegars like the one in ACV can decrease both systolic and diastolic blood pressure. It does it on an average of about three points. And it's not the only natural remedy. There are others like controlling your breathing, slowing that breathing down. And we'll talk about it in just a minute, but we've done videos on that in the past. As you slow your breathing down, several things happen. You increase the bicarb in your blood, and you increase the vagus nerve, the nerve that says, let's slow down and relax. Both of those can decrease your blood pressure. So with the three points, systolic and diastolic from ACV, and more points from controlling your breathing, from meditation, other natural remedies, you can actually have an impact. But again, if you're doing this with ACV, you got to have about 30 milliliters per day. Guess how much that is? Two tablespoons. So remember, you can decrease your blood pressure with several natural mechanisms. ACV works. It's not a magic solution. There are no magic solutions. But again, it's another benefit that you may have heard of. Now, here's one that I bet you haven't heard of. ACV's role in Alzheimer's. What? Dementia? Can ACV cure dementia? No, I don't think it's going to cure dementia. But there is one study you see here. It's discussing the potential for ACV to help decrease Alzheimer's. You know, when you start understanding the role that ACV has with diabetes, which we've already discussed, and you connect the dots that the real scientists throughout the world these days working on Alzheimer's are beginning to call it type 3 diabetes, then you can start to connect the dots. Thanks to the antioxidant properties of ACV, there is potential for it to improve Alzheimer's or delay Alzheimer's development. The science is just not there yet, and I do take it, I do expect that might be helpful, especially for my own diabetes. All right. So you may be thinking, okay, you got me convinced. I'm going to try it. Now, which brand should I buy? We're going to get some debate on this issue. We already have in our previous apple cider vinegar videos. Here's a couple of things to look for, though, no matter which brand you're looking at. Number one, make sure that it's a brand that doesn't have added sugars. Can you believe that? Apple cider vinegar with sugar added? What's that about? I'll just leave that alone. Number two, it's been tested by third parties for quality. Believe it or not, some don't do that. And number three, make sure that it has the mother. So the first points are intuitive. You don't want apple cider vinegar that's got much sugar, like soda. And that, again, defeats the purpose. You also want the best quality. Someone else to look at it and say, yep, this is good quality. But let's think about that mother. So I've read a couple of papers tackling this, and here's what I found. The mother is a thick, hard layer. It's formed by acetic acid-producing bacteria. They're on the surface of the vinegar. It's composed mainly of a carbohydrate called cellulose. And if you're thinking, wait a minute, did I just hear carbohydrate? We just said we want to avoid carbohydrates. I got that. There's one carbohydrate you don't have to worry about, cellulose or fiber. And that's what this is. The mother's usually present unfiltered ACV. Now, there's an interesting thing to note about it. The mother also includes things called phenolic compounds. Geek alert. We're going to have just a couple of seconds about geeky stuff. The phenolic compounds... For the organic chemistry guys out there, they have that special ring structure on their molecules. They've also been shown to have very good, very positive antioxidant and anti-inflammatory, and even antimicrobial 
properties. The mother has these four, gallic acid, chlorogenic acid, catechin, and caffeic acid. Another study found that ACV contains a lot of bacteria from the families Lactococcus and Acetobacter. And those are not exclusive to the mother, but they are very positive bacteria that we want to have to push out the bad bacteria. Even though there are claims about enzymes involved in the mother, I haven't found good research papers that back that up. Or papers comparing unfiltered ACV with the mother and filtered ACV. But that doesn't mean there are no benefits to the mother, since we saw the phenolic compounds involved. Those might be major players in the ACV game. Just a word of caution, unfiltered ACV is usually not pasteurized. That means it could be contaminated with unhealthy bacteria, which could be dangerous for people, especially with weak immune systems, children, pregnant women. So if you're looking for unfiltered and third-party reviewed ACV, hate to say it, Fairchild is one, that's fine, don't get a lot of pushback on that one, but Bragg's is another. And they do both seem to be good options. I know, I've read comments, we had a ton of them before. Bragg's was bought by Bill Gates, and I get it, and he watered it down, I get all that. When you actually look at the facts behind that, I'm not so sure that happened. Now, it does look like Katy Perry and Orlando Bloom are investors, but again, we're not so sure that it really got watered down. Anyhow, the brand of ACV that you choose is your choice, not mine. A third option can be Kevala, but it seems it only comes on a plastic bottle or in a plastic bottle. If you remember the video we did a few months ago on microplastics and their linkage to extra cardiovascular risk, you'll understand why I don't get things in plastic very much if I can help it. It's hard. You know, still, most things come in plastics, but when I can avoid it, I will. So I don't get Kavala ACV. Now, there's one more hidden ACV benefit. You really ought to know about it. We didn't discuss it here. You can check it out in this video, though. 